Hey, thanks for pressing play on another Pay Me No Mind Sports and Entertainment video. I definitely want to get into some bite down boxing. By the way, my name is Wood. Uh, please consider subscribing to the channel. Also, help me out if you can hit that like button. Uh, you know, uh, if you like the way that any information is being presented or broken down. Uh, you know, and I love to uh, chop it up with you on, on any of these topics. So, you know, feel free to leave a comment as well. Um, quick entertainment note. One of the best shows, one of the, one, in my opinion, one of the best written uh, series out there in, uh, in all of uh, TV and all the various streaming uh, apps and whatnot. One of the best shows out there, Bosch, uh, dropped. Actually, it was the, the, the 10 episodes were out there last night, uh, but you can watch them. You know, you could watch them last night, but it was supposed to premiere today. Um, but check it out. Titus Welliver, Jamie Hector, uh, Marlo Stanfield from The Wire. Um, let me know what you think. Enjoy. Uh, for everybody that is a fan of Bosch, you know, you, you, we got some good stuff. And I'd be interested, are you going to are you going to get right through it? Or being in this quarantine situation where you break it up, you know, two episodes a night, one a, one a day or, or whatever. How would you approach it? Also, uh, be on the lookout for the the Last Dance uh, documentary series with the, the, the 98 Bulls, the last uh, Bulls championship run. That's also out there. You should see you see that buzzing right now um, in various outlets. Uh, so bite down boxing, man. Wow. I honestly had to, uh, I, I saw the articles out there on a couple different websites, and I thought it was imperative that I hear Deontay Wilder for myself, that I go and check out the uh, the interview and get the context of everything that he said. Um, so he appeared on, this is the first appearance that he's made, you know, since uh, February 22nd. That evening when he lost his uh, his WBC heavyweight title, he, you know he took his first suffered his first career defeat, and um, and then he supposedly went on vacation, and you know the world moved forward arguing on his behalf, and we hadn't heard anything from him. But he appeared on the uh, the, the PBC podcast, an episode that's dated April fifteenth, and. Um, Wow, I gotta say, um, I don't really feel like he's. Um, I don't feel like he's in a better place. You know, I, I feel like he's in denial, and um, I this is this is gonna impede. You know, in my opinion, the 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 the, the changes and improvements that need to happen, you know, to en enhance, uh, you know, his chances in the trilogy fight, if, if it does, in fact, happen. Um, I'll run down a couple of highlights of this thing, man. Um, he starts off once the, the conversation. First thing, check out his difference, his opinion of the COVID-19 situation versus uh, the handling of th this matter in the Terrence Crawford household. You dig into that for yourself. I think that uh, Wilder says some some thoughtful things and some useful things. But I'll leave it at that. Um, so getting into going back, him revisiting February 22nd when he lost his title. He starts out with uh, something occurred during the final 15 minutes until the bell. And this just... Uh, this baffles me. Um, if you look at it, how he addresses this same situation throughout the whole 22, 23 minute interview, because he comes back to that at the end of the interview and says something about, you know, money is the root of all evil people. Uh, this, ha I can't believe that this happened to me at this stage in my career. It's almost like, man, he was, his locker room was visited by, some shadowy figure and he was given an offer of some kind that he couldn't refuse. I just don't understand why you continue putting this out there. He said he can't speak on it. 
Um, he doesn't want to speak on it. He's still reassessing it and, you know, making some changes, mowing the grass, you know, so he can see the snakes, so on and so forth. One thing here in the, in AJ's locker room before the June 1st fight with, uh, with Ruiz where he was stopped and knocked down four times, we heard what happened in that locker room, allegedly. Panic attack, anxiety attack, so on and so forth. I, I won't go into it now, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then he comes back, he gets the victory, and he kind of skated over it. But we still never got any clarification. I don't foresee us ever getting any clarification on what the hell Deontay Wilder is talking about. And I just feel like... I, I don't feel like it's useful, to be, to be frank. But he says, uh, he also goes on with the third person stuff you know something if you know boxing then you know that uh that wasn't the real Deontay Wilder something was wrong with him from the first bell he said that he was retreating that's not like him you look at the first fight uh he was a hunter I think that's very interesting right there because I've seen the fight I watched the fight a couple of times now he had a pretty decent start. He's he he started out trying to box. His jab was very uh successful early on. Uh he landed that right hand. Um Tyson Fury was kind of in the middle of a, of stepping back and rolled with it, but um he landed a good right hand in the first one to two rounds. So how do you come so like your breakdown and assessment, your re recollection of what happened in the fight isn't even accurate with what happened. So what, what world is very important before this trilogy that you have a solid understanding, a grasp of reality. It's, it's a very important thing to make sure you check that box that you understand what happened. So, yeah, he says, um, from the first bell, I was retreating. You know, you were trying to be strategic or tactical in box. He also came back later on and said, well, you know, I might have, which I said this after the fight, I might have been defeated or I might have lost, but I'm winning in life. And that's one thing that to hold on, I mean, to, uh, to focus on here is that he's accomplished a very important objective in the life of all men. You got to be able to provide for you and yours. And... In, the, in this run that he's had, um, he is he has earned enough money to give himself a chance for his kids' kids, you know, to live off of the fruits of his labor. Um, and then he came back towards the end and said, you know, I am a king. I'm a good king, uh, you know, to my day ones, blah, blah, blah. Uh, went down that whole road. Guys got to go to different places to believe what they need to believe about themselves. Uh, but the one troubling thing, and there's a, actually an article out there, I guess, uh, Roy Jones with IFL TV. I haven't seen it yet. But one of the more, the, the second most troubling thing here, again, uh, not being in touch or being out of touch with reality is he comes back and says that, uh, he doesn't look at Tyson Fury as a champion. Seriously? Seriously? Like, you don't look at him and he says, well, we have the third fight. We, we're not finished here. Like I said, the way that he has to look at the world and the character that he needs to get into, the, the mask thing, this whole performance that needs to be put on, uh... It's just letting me... Andre Ward said something in one of his fights, one of the fights that he was calling. But he said that, um, you know, he was listening to Andre, I mean, to uh, Sergey Kovalev going into the rematch. He listened to all of his uh, his interviews and his, his comments and what he said during fight week. He took in all of that and understood exactly who he was dealing with and what how he needed to approach that Kovalev. And I think right here, uh, was still not tapping into reality, what the tape said. Uh, 
you're giving Fury a lot to work with right here. And we know that Fury is, he's, he's wild. And, and, and the crazy cut that he played, you know, for his ring music entrance, his ring walk, we know that he's a wild boy. Um, but there's a lot of uh, rhyme and reason and methods to his to his madness. And um, I just foresee, like, if, if you're going to have all this stuff swirling around, he's... He, if you don't reconcile, you know, kind of like I said, his his interpretation of what happened and what really happened, if if that's not reconciled properly going into this fight, you know, later on this year in October or whatever it is, once again we're gonna see an individual with a uh, a, a dressing room that has one vibe in it and a lot of uncertainty and a lot of uh, you know whatever, and then we're going to have the champion, the current champion, Tyson Fury, over in his dressing room with a very singular approach to what he's getting ready to do. And like I said, it's, it's just, it's imperative that he figure out, and, and that's the thing, man, he runs the show. He, like he said, he, he said, I'm a good leader. If you're a good leader, then how did you, how did you have this, how did how did this happen on your watch going into this first, into this second fight if you're if you're a good leader so like i said man i don't i don't know who's going to keep it funky with um with, with Deontay. i don't know who can keep it funky with him he mentioned that after this he he's been in touch and, and, and in contact with with George Foreman uh and George Foreman said he wants to trick teach him some tricks of the trade he told him he has some ways that he can strengthen different parts, specific parts of his body. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't really buy into all of that. Again, man, this isn't trying to pile it on. This isn't trying to uh, kick a man while he's down. This isn't trying to spin Deontay Wilder's words, you know, and, and, and make the brother sound like a fool. But, um, again, it's, it's very, it's, 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 uh, it's concerning that he seems to be that this is his stance on this. Um, and it, it's almost like, you, you know, reach out to a Tom Brady, you know, and, or, you know, he, he talks to uh, Alabama, you know, football and, and Nick Saban and whatnot. But, you know, Brady doesn't let a lot of, uh, he keeps his cards close to his vest, you know, and, and only gives off, very little information. He, he he carries the discussion. He creates the narrative and, and maintains the narrative. And like I said right here, with all of this stuff that we hear in this 23 minutes, um, this doesn't sound like a good leader. Um, this sounds like the Mad King from Game of Thrones. You know, uh, and, and, and not just trying to throw in an analogy just for the sense of, of throwing in an analogy. But like I said, this is a, a pivotal fight, a pivotal moment. And um, it needs to be some truth. It, 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 you know, it, you need to go into this situation like on, on solid footing. And like I said, uh, you know. Fury was able to come back after hearing this and he was able to tweet out there or whatever, whether it was on Instagram, he was able to say something very direct and succinct that, no, nah, bro, I smashed you. I beat the, be I beat the, ver I beat you, you know, there deal with it, get over it. And he's, he, he's, he's actually helping him out and encouraging him to do the right thing. Like you have to, understand that you were comprehensively defeated and you need to you need to change it you need to you need to, to get over that you need to deal with that it's like rocky and um adrian on the beach talking like you need to have that serious kind con i don't know if it's with his, his woman telly or whoever you know jd's or mark breland or whatever 
But he said in this art in this interview several times, you know, I'm discussing. I still haven't figured this out. I still don't know how this happened to me. Um, I can't believe this. You know, money. A bunch of silly BS that is is going to get in the way of you moving forward in a positive uh, manner and getting on with it. Um, so. I would imagine that, you know, people who his supporters, his base, his core, I, I would imagine that everything he said here, uh, those people are, are encouraged. And um, that's, you know, good for them. I just think um, it's kind of disturbing. And it's it's kind of where I I I, I um uh, you know I kind of hit my wall with 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 Deontay Wilder and, and how closely I follow him um you know you, you this this just this just doesn't um it, just, it sounds weird to me it just sounds weird to me um there's a lot of different ways to sell fights there's a lot of different way the messaging and to interact with your fans and to uh to go about this and, and and like I said coming out of this situation right there the worst night of his career um it it it, it doesn't seem like it's all been it all it's all registered and been processed in a healthy in a healthy manner and um you know like I said to to say from the first bell that wasn't me and I was a zombie and um you know that wasn't me I don't think you gain anything by trying to convince us that that wasn't you versus understanding that, um, that, that, that this man just defeated you on that night. Like just accept that. And now you can go back and review everything, what, whatever went on in camp, um, so on and so forth. But I, I don't know, man. So anyway, you know, that's kind of my commentary on it. Check that uh, check that interview out, that episode. Anthony Durrell was also on there and said some pretty enlightening things about, uh, you know, the efforts, the continuing efforts up in Flint to get the water situation corrected going back to like 2014, I think. Um, and then where he is with his career, um, you know, check it out, man. The PBC, uh, you know, weekly podcast, I believe, is, is just what it's called. Hey, man, bite down boxing. Don't let them count you out. Peace.